Hello again, and welcome to BSG TV, the official YouTube page of the Bootstrapper's Guide. For those of you new to us, the Bootstrapper's Guide is the online resource for do-it-yourself entrepreneurs. I'm Tori Norman, and today we're going to be continuing our conversation about Wave Accounting, a free web-based accounting software. In our previous episode, we taught you a little bit about Wave, what it is, how it works, so if you haven't seen that one, I would recommend going there first. You can find a link to it below this video. Also, there's a link to our blog post on Wave Accounting that tells you a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of Wave to give you an idea of whether or not it's the right fit for you. Also in our first video, we talked a little bit about how to set up your account and go over some of the basic essentials in the settings to get you up and running. Today, we want to continue that conversation and go over a few other settings that can help you kind of customize wave accounting and, and make it your own and make it fit your specific business needs. So in our first episode we taught you that you can find the settings down here at the bottom of the dashboard. This is really a checklist of items that are still outstanding in our settings that need to be done. Once these checklists are complete this may not be available on your dashboard anymore so I wanted to show you where else you can find it. Up here under account, if you look at settings for your company, then uh, that will take you to the settings page as well. And in our last episode, we helped you set up the business profile with some of the information about your company and how it handles its accounting transactions. Today we're going to continue with invoice customization and we're going to talk a bit about the chart of accounts. So in the invoice customization, if you really like to get in there and add fields, move them around, change fonts, colors, that kind of customization to that extent, Wave might not be a good option for you. Wave's really made for the small entrepreneur, someone that may not be as tech savvy. So if you want something that's just simple, easy, professional, up and running in minutes, Wave's a great, a great choice for you. You'll see there's only about four templates that are available in Wave. There are not a lot of customization you can do to them, so you just kind of have to pick the one that best fits your, your style. Um, you can preview any of them just by hovering over them and giving them a click. This is the one we're going to use today. I'm an accountant. I love to stuff things in boxes. And lines are really important for me to be able to read things quickly and efficiently. So I like this, this template. It has a little bit of color and flash to it, so it's not just a boring old invoice. So I just like the look and feel of this one. This is what we're going to use. Um, you'll notice that there are some colors, there are some highlights in here. You can customize your accent color. You've only got one to choose from. Well, you know, one that you can customize. Since Bootstrapper's Guide does things in blues, we're going to give a blue a shot, see if we like it. You can also add your custom company logo to it. You saw that up here in the upper left. So we're going to grab ours. There are some requirements to the company logo. You'll see, you know, it needs to be a JPEG or a our GIF, it's got to be less than 10 megabytes, and it can't be more than 150 pixels, height or width. That's down here below. Just make sure you fit that before you um, import your com company logo. You can check here to add that company logo to your invoices. Down here in payment terms, I really would have liked to have seen a little more option here. They only have due upon receipt and due within X amount of days. So if you do like a 210 net 30, that's not in your default payment terms and these aren't editable. So the way around that is you can just come down here to the standard message box and say like 2% net 30. And that should do it for you. And then that message box will show up here in the bottom corner. But for us, I want to do due upon receipt. So for this message box, I'm just going to leave a little message for my cu customers and hit save. And that's all there is to it. That's the entire invoice customization. And so, like I said, if you're into something simple, quick and dirty, get it done, make it look nice, and move on to more important things, this is a great option for you. And that's kind of what it was designed to do. So with that, there's other things we can talk about, products, customers, but they're all going to start referencing our chart of accounts. So we want to make sure that chart of accounts is clean before we start pointing things to it. So that's where we're going to go next. In the chart of accounts, you can see it's, it's based on the, your setup information you gave it on the setup screen. It picked a chart of accounts for you. You may like that. If you don't have a lot of help setting up your chart of accounts, it might be nice to have something to get you in the right direction. I don't like a template chart of accounts because it's kind of like somebody else coming to you and saying, this is the way everybody else runs their business, so that's just how you're going to do it. 
this is what you'll do for your business. Have a nice life. And I'm not a big fan of that. I want to make it my own. So the chart of accounts is really what's going to help us make our company accounting our own. So we want to set this up to help us be able to group and organize our transactions in a way that helps us make be better management decisions. So if there's stuff on here that doesn't apply to you, you're not going to use, first step in the chart of accounts is let's clean out all that extra bloat. So like scrolling down here, accounting fees, I'm going to be, you know, I may be charging or charging, huh, that'd be nice. Maybe paying my accountant to help me with some things, advertising promotion I'll be using. But then I get down here, political contributions. I'm not going to make any political contributions with my little company right now. So let's get rid of that. And further down here, I've got this vehicle lease payments. I'm not going to be making any vehicle lease payments. My company doesn't own a vehicle. And if I do make them later on, don't worry about it. I can go back in and add the account later. But for now, let's keep it as small as we can. Once you've got that all kind of cleaned up, you may decide that there's some accounts that aren't here that you'd like to add. For example, I don't see any bank accounts here. We'll want to add those in. Also, one of my favorites is, you know, I pay for a lot of my company expenses on my personal credit card to get the rewards points, and then I have the company reimburse me on a monthly basis. And I want to be able to track that here in the software. So I can come here to liabilities, whoops, current, current debt, and we'll call this a shareholder's loan. You'll see that list gives you some recommendations of things to choose from. That's really good if you're not really familiar with what you want to do with your chart of accounts. And you'll notice that even though you pick them, um, you can take the standard name, but most of them you can also edit. So we're going to call this one do, oops, do, <laughs> to Tori. So I like to reword them so I remember what they are. Um, so those that's the money that the company owes back to me that I've paid for. Now you notice you've got this payment account checkbox. If that's checked, then when I go into a bill, I can select this account to pay that bill. In this case, I really want to do that because you know I'm using my personal card to pay that bill, so I can use this account in the software to pay for that bill and then that account grows in the same increments that my personal check credit card does and I can reconcile the two and make sure I get reimbursed for the full amount. Um, again, you can set the currencies for those accounts. Um, Wave has full ability to handle monthly currency. In our example, we're just using US dollars. In more of an advanced post, we may hit the, the foreign currency stuff later on. And there you go. Um, just go through, clean up, remove, add, You'll notice here there's some accounts you can't edit. Those accounts are system accounts. They're required in order for the accounting software to run correctly. You can't get rid of them. So if there's some you don't use, like this unrealized gain on foreign currency, don't worry about them. Unless there's a balance in them, they're not going to show up on your reports anyway. So you just kind of have to leave them there. So now that that's taken care of, we can look at our beginning balances. If you're a brand new company, this isn't going to really apply to you because everything starts at zero. But if you've been in operation for a few years and you're converting from a different software or you've been, you know, you already have money in your accounts, you have sales that are already recorded and you don't want to have to re-record all the transactions in, in Wave, you can just put the beginning balances here. So you can give it a description. We can call it like, we'll call it beginning or you can call it opening balances. The date, if these are your beginning balances, you know, let's say I'm starting operations August 1st. I don't want to put them in August 1st because they're going to show up in my August reports. And these really aren't August transactions. They're everything that happened before August. So I'm going to want to put them one day before my beginning date. And then you can see there's zeros on the debits and credit sides. That's just to help you in case you don't understand all of the debits and credits stuff. Um, Generally speaking, accounts receivables are debits. So if you have an accounts receivable balance, it's probably going to go here. So you can kind of follow those zeros to guide you along. The only thing you need to make sure is at the bottom, the debits and the credits need to have the same dollar amounts. Otherwise, the transaction's incomplete and it won't work. So go through that, set up your beginning balances. And when we come back in our third episode, we'll help you go in and finish up adding the other settings. And then quick or wave accounting will be ready for you to start running transactions and we'll walk through those transactions step by step together. So again, check out our other posts on wave accounting and we'll be back with you for our third episode.